Hello there, my brothers and sisters in Christ. May the peace of the Lord be with you. I'm so glad that you're listening to this message from Pastor Caroline. This week, Pastor Caroline talks about prayer and lead us to a deeper understanding of the nature of our relationship with the Lord. Before we get to Pastor Caroline's lesson, we'll hear our call to worship and the Bible readings, which inspired today's lesson. We'll end the video with a couple minutes of our wonderful organist playing the postlude. Please enjoy. If you have any questions or comments, please post them and we'll respond. Even better, join us on Sunday at 10.15 a.m. either online or in person. If you come in person, we'll get you a coffee after the service. Hope to see you there. Our help is in the name of the Lord the maker of heaven and earth. Our hope is in the name of the Lord, the healer of all that is wounded. Our trust is in the name of the Lord, the one we gather to worship and praise. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Today's first reading is from Psalm 124, verses 1 through 8. If you wish to follow along, it is on page 572 in the uh, Pew Bible. Uh, today's psalm addresses the struggles we sometimes face. It speaks about enemies, and it speaks about floods and rising water. It it speaks about a bird caught in a snare, and it, it reminds us that the struggles we face, literally and figuratively, I guess, we do so not alone. Listen for the word of the Lord. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, let Israel now say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side when our enemies attacked us, then they would have swallowed us up alive when their anger was kindled against us. Then the flood would have swept us away. The torrent would have gone over us, the raging waters. Blessed be the Lord who has not given us as prey to their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. This is the word of the Lord. Our second scripture lesson this morning comes from the book of James, chapter 5, verses 13 through 20, and it may be found on page 228 in the New Testament section of your pew Bibles if you would like to read along with me. Listen now for God's word to you this day. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick. And the Lord will raise them up, and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another, and pray for one another, so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain, and for three years and six months it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, if any among you wanders from the truth and is brought back by another, you should know that whoever brings back a sinner from wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Do you remember how it used to be? How you used to have to be sitting at your desk at work or physically in your home to receive a telephone call. When my husband and I were house hunting in the historic part of Westfield, we toured a home with a wooden phone box still in a hallway. I could imagine a notepad sitting just below it with a pencil on the shelf for messages. The glee of the teenage daughter when her parents got that long, coiled cord that could wrap further down the hallway so she could talk more privately. People would try to call your house at the most inconvenient time, assuming that's when they'd catch you at home, not at work or an appointment or running an errand. They'd call and interrupt whatever you were doing, cooking or eating your dinner, putting your children to bed. Anyone in the household could answer, so the caller would exchange pleasantries before getting to the point. I recently saw a funny post that said, Kids today will never understand the annoyance of calling your friend and having to ask to speak to him. When answering machines came along, it gave a little more freedom because you didn't have to answer the phone right away. The caller could leave a message, and you could return the call when it suited you or not. Now we're all so accessible that most of us carry a cell phone around with us wherever we go. We don't have to plan times to talk like we used to, although we often receive calls at inconvenient times. We seem available day or night, choosing when to silence or power down our phones when it suits us. Mobile devices make us so reachable, so in touch with society, you'd think this handheld technology would make us better at communicating. Forget pleasantries and small talk. We've become efficient at what we need to say and why we're calling. We can multitask, too. With headphones, you don't even have to hold the device. The false sense of comfort we get from thinking that we can connect anywhere has resulted in a failure on our part to make time and space for genuine connection. When we can share anything, anytime, somehow the sacredness of a predictable weekly evening call or even a proper time for worship loses its significance. You don't even have to step foot in a sanctuary anymore to worship with a church. This is a benefit. It's an evolution of our time. We are grateful to extend our reach literally beyond our physical doors. And we thank all of those of you joining us online. Still, I wonder if we can catch Sunday worship in the middle of the week, click on a video, even fast forward through the prayers, when do we take a Sabbath? Is any time sacred anymore? In the age when everyone is so accessible, how do we carve out space to connect solely to God? When do we pray? Several years ago, I was delighted to purchase the Presbyterian Daily Prayer app on my phone. I've been using the book for over a decade, but I don't carry it around with me like I do my phone. I would tell people about the app, how it updates daily with the lectionary, and how you can stand in the grocery line and swipe through the scriptures while you're waiting to check out. It's a low-maintenance way to carve out a minute here or there. You don't even have to dust off a Bible. Now, don't get me wrong. I appreciate the conveniences we've discovered. It's fine to squeeze in a moment here or there. You can pray at a traffic stop or while walking your dog. Surely many good Christians are claiming to be praying right now out on the golf course or the soccer field. There's no wrong way to pray. 
But that doesn't mean that we can't sacrifice a little more time for it. I once worried about the fact that I had fallen asleep during bedtime prayer. Sometimes my mind wanders and then it drifts back. Other times it completely drifts off. It's a lovely image, though, like a child so comfortable in God's parental presence. We can fall asleep mid-sentence trying to share about our day. Perhaps God speaks back to us in our dreams. I know some of you are quite the prayer warriors. You are disciplined. You journal and remember requests during your set formal prayer time. I'll be praying with our prayer group at 4 o'clock today on Zoom if any of you have a need that you'd like to lift up specifically in our community. But if you're more like me, a sinner in need of grace, a prayer warrior in training, a half-awake irregular prayer, if you pray on the go and randomly try to squeeze it in during a commute or carpool pickup, then I have a suggestion. Maybe like in the olden days, when we used to plan phone calls on a landline, perhaps planning a dedicated prayer time would serve us well. In the New Testament, James writes to readers who are already well-versed in the Christian faith, He doesn't have the patience to put up with their excuses, their misunderstandings of cheap grace and abuse of the forgiveness that flows from a life together. Skipping past the good news of the gospel, James seeks to instruct Christians who already know better on how to correct their behavior and live out their faith in the world. Jesus, like an operator mediating for us, is better than a wireless network. We can pray directly to God through Jesus' holy name. We also learn to pray from him, sharing an intimate title with him of child of God, as we are able to address God as Father. The very word incarnate is so transformational, more so than a cellular network or even a teacher. It's hard to grasp that if we're only trying to connect to him while standing in the grocery line. When is a good time to call out to God? God is certainly available all the time, but setting our phones aside, we are not. So James addresses this human condition. Having watched his brothers and sisters in Christ walk through the highs and lows of life alone. He asks them, Are any among you suffering? You should pray. The psalmist says our help is in the name of the Lord. James goes on, lest we think God's only there for the bad stuff. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. God receives our joy. We come into God's presence with singing and thanksgiving. Are any among you sick? This time, it's not the patients who do the praying, but the elders of the church who come to pray and anoint them. In community, you don't even have to pray for yourself. You are held up by others who plead for your healing. Here we learn about intercession, requesting prayer on behalf of another. There's both a personal nature and a communal nature to prayer. It is a gift. Pray for one another, James writes, so that you may be healed. The you being healed is not just the person praying or the person being lifted up in prayer. It's a symbiotic you. If all y'all pray, the benefit will blanket everyone. The whole community heals through the act of prayer. James writes boldly, the prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. 
Now, if you joined me in confession earlier, you'd know that we're not righteous yet. But surely when we seek to live out our faith, when we make ourselves available to God, when we pick up the phone at an inconvenient time to listen to the word of Jesus Christ, our Lord, then we brush up against the righteous one. A word with God, a little prayer, a slight holy encounter is so powerful that it makes us more effective witnesses and friends out in the world. You see, we don't pray to get stuff or to tell God where it's time to direct divine attention. Praying is not like inserting a debit card into a holy ATM when the currency flows out like a cure for cancer, a recovery for an addict, or even a good parking space. We pray because God speaks to us through prayer. Are any suffering? God assumes our suffering like Christ on the cross. Are any cheerful? He multiplies our cheerfulness like the rush of a mighty wind. Are any sick? God comforts the sick in ways that are sometimes only discovered in the afterlife. My colleague Nanette Sawyer writes, Prayers remind me that I am not alone, that I am deeply connected to the world. Do my prayers change God? I don't think so. But they do change me, and they change my experience of my relationship to God. There's no need to judge ourselves or each other for our heartfelt prayers for miracles. No need to feel guilt or shame that our faith is not strong enough to avert death. While we pray, we know God is near now and always. Friends, when Jesus taught us to pray, Thy will be done. He invites us to join him in praying to God the Father, saying nothing about fulfilling his own will or mine or yours. When we pray, we don't better understand God's will, but we begin to accept it. Praying for another surrounds her like an embrace, Holding someone in prayer lightens the load he carries. When we make time for prayer, we invite God into our lives, which changes us for the better. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Be with us in the speaking. Be with us in the listening. Be with us in the in-between. Help us to know your presence. Help us to pray fervently without ceasing. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.